What? President Bush and John Kerry yeah. have been warned by both of their parties to tone down the negative campaign attacks on each other. Bush said recently, Senator Kerry voted for the Patriot Act, for NAFTA, for the No Child Left Behind, and for the use of force in Iraq. <laughs> now he opposes the Patriot Act, NAFTA, No Child Left Behind, the liberation of Iraq. My opponent clearly has strong beliefs. He, they just don't last very long. <laughs> and he's just to that this. This administration is running the most arrogant, inept, reckless, ideological foreign policy in the modern history of this country. Now, and everything. It's just the opposite. If anything is bad domestically, and foreign policy is going to turn out to be the best. Now, go ahead. This is what I think. I think the people that say that it's too negative, like Joe Lieberman, have no business talking. He was in the primaries, and he won as many primaries as Scott Thompson. That's right. I won one more. <laughs> they, they should you be only the winners get to make the rules, Wayne? Yeah, basically, the, the candidates Interesting. that go negative to tend, the to, tend, to serve, the score, tend, tend to serve in office. Basically, the, that's true. The people and, that go negative tend to serve and it the voter turnout goes up when the um, campaigns are negative. In really? Fact, yeah. In 2002, <laughs> in 2002, in the senatorial race in Georgia between Max Cleland and Saxby Chambliss, <laughs> Saxby Chambliss, <laughs> he ran an ad comparing Max Cleland, a Democrat, to Osama bin Laden. Oh. The people came out 12 percent more, and Saxby Chambliss, who's a Republican a-hole, won. <laughs> no, <laughs> Kathy, your palms are looking very old. You need a palm lift. What? Definitely. You need a palm lift. Absolutely. On Entertainment Tonight. Next week. I'll give her a palm lift. Hey, oh, God. God. <laughs> well, listen to me. Well, they, should be, they should be more negative. I, I, mean, I don't understand. More they're, negative? Well, there's a serious issue yes. going on here. It's not like they're talking. I mean, they, you know, they, they should really come out. You can't say that someone's entire basis for invading a country is a lie. I think they should play nice dodgeball. Right. But let me just say one thing. What? On the one hand... They can't be more negative, and here's why, because the American people have to, we know that either way, things are going to be what they're going to be, none of them really care, so at least smile at us for no, four years, you son of a bitch. You're wrong, you are wrong about that. <laughs> Your boy Kerry cares about the American people more than Bush? No. First of all, I, I don't know why he's my boy Kerry. I was hoping you were lit. <laughs> Because I can't keep on top of your Irish. I can't keep on top of everybody's every move. I thought you were liberal. I thought you were conservative. No, I'm liberal. I don't know how you turned into a liberal. Because you're, like, cause you're <laughs> stupid friends in California. Who leads you into it? You. you are isolated and alienated from your friends in California. And the only way that has talked to you what? is if you turn liberal. It's hard to talk about. Am I wrong? <laughs> you think you know things, but you have not read my hand. In 1988, in, in Dukakis versus Bush, the father, Duka uh, Bush brought up Willie Horton, who was in prison. They got out of jail, raped somebody, or whatever. And that's why Bush won because really? he played dirty. And if the Democrats want to win, and I hope we do, we got to play dirty and take the high road and fight to win. And now, you know the thing. You know the thing. You know the thing. And now Willie Horton. And now Willie Horton has a reality show <laughs> with O.J. Simpson, the two of them. <laughs> you know what I love? That they now they have these new campaign rules so that they have to link themselves. The candidates have to link themselves yes. to the negative ads because before you could have an attack ad and then just say and you didn't. Say, oh, so okay. now they have to actually, after every negative ad, they have to say, I'm George Bush and I approve, I approve it. it. Right. They got to do it even after the things they themselves just said. Right. It looks, it looks bizarre. Like the, the, the president himself will speak and then right after he'll say, I'm George Bush and I approve of what, what I, I just said right. two seconds ago. <laughs> you should just go start a plug go that way. That's good. That was good. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about this. International what? students at American universities are refusing to pay a new $65 right. a semester right. for a new federal tracking system that's been created to prevent terrorists from entering on student visas, which is a frequent occurrence. What do you guys think of that? Anybody the, have a, the whole thing is absurd. First of all, why do we even need foreign exchange students anymore? They're anyway, not exchange. Don't, 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 don't we have a... American girls with mustaches? I mean, we don't have to. Oh, oh, I mean, oh. it made more sense. The Swedish girls. They don't have mustaches, but they're very light. The hot Nordic girls. Yeah. That's like making Jesus pay for his nails. <laughs> oh, Scott! Well, well, I I think think it, I what? Think How was it like that? Well, it's because you come to another country and then they're going to do something which is like basically uh, setting you off from everybody else, and they make you pay for it. It's ridiculous. But, they, but should, they should. It's like you make making them. me pay to pay for my hotel to be on this show, <laughs> but you do owe me some money from that. <laughs> You know, it's, these exchange students, it's bad enough they come over here, they work hard, and they, they screw up the grade, the curve, for like the American students that just want to get drunk the whole time. Right. You know, I don't see why that's 
good point. I think we, I think they should have to pay just because they get a lot of privileges coming over here, and we've been ripping them off for years anyway. Because with the you thought out of state tuition is bad, out of country tuition is crazy. So they're already uh, so we're ripping them off by letting them come to this country and live and get educated. I no, they're <laughs> learning about the American system, right? Of letting them come, come in and then being humiliated and losing. Humiliated your money. for sixty five dollars. Sixty five dollars. I know. I have like a charge. Charge them sixty five hundred. Let's up it. <laughs> we need that money. Did we have a deficit because of your president. I think you should make them track each other. <laughs> but if you could have just seen it last year, I can't even believe this. Can you wait? Can you let this Canadian talk? Can you just tag their ears like birds? <laughs> Well, I don't know how we can solve the 50 in Ja Rule Field. Maybe I'll solve it. So what's up? <laughs> There's been a noticeable increase in the presence of... That was not the subject. I was just trying to be... There's a noticeable increase in the presence of religious activities in the workplace, such as Bible studies, office prayers, and conferences that teach how to combine faith and business. Now, I know this is the greatest crime in the world. Tell me how, please, because to me it seems just fine. Well, because some religions, religious practices aren't consistent with the workplace. Like, you wouldn't want a bunch of Santeria worshippers working in, like, a poultry farm, for sure. <laughs> Why not? They would love it. Let's <laughs> combine his work and blood bank. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's I think it's ridiculous. I'm so sick to death of hearing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, me Every too. time somebody talks about Jesus, I want to puke, and it also makes me think they're stupid. I, I do. Like, when I hear people, have, when I hear I people talking about Jesus, to me it's like hearing a, like, a California Valley Girl accent or a Southern accent. I immediately yeah. think, mm, not very smart. It's true, some of the stupidest people. Yeah, that's right. No, but it's true, some of the stupidest people, like Albert Einstein, a lot of people that are, uh, said religion without science is idiotic, and science without religion is idiotic. Like Albert Einstein, yes, yeah, religion is very stupid. No, but they all Just they don't, no, they no, have to have a little faith. No, they're not all hypocrites. No, no, but most of those people, the intellectuals that come to religion, they do it at the end of their life. Yeah, Generally they're on their deathbed, smartest. they get converted. They're on their smartest. Yeah. Albert no, they're was like that early. desperate, I think. But no, I Albert Einstein didn't say that when he was 14. No, I don't know. But I think there's a really dangerous wave this. where people, the conservatives are really trying to erode the separation between church and state, and that really scares me. But the separation between church religious. and state was created to protect religion, but go ahead. No, my, my point was just that it's not about church and state, it's about businesses. I think it creates a bad precedent for women who are trying to get ahead, because in the old days, you just had to service your boss. And now, with religion in the workplace, you may have to do the four questions. But yeah. you're still on your knees. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me say something. Okay, right. yeah. It's hypocritical. It's hypocritical yeah, to even say any of this. <laughs> oh. Suddenly the place turned into the only, the Chelsea only. at 12 midnight on a Friday. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's hypocritical to say religion doesn't mix with bin, uh, business. Because as we well know in showbiz, you tell me CAA doesn't start out with like three readings from the Torah every morning. <laughs> Come on, what's up? <laughs> well, I think the only thing that bugs me is that with the rise of this religious activity at work, there's also been an increase in drug testing. I think I have no problem if you have a prayer meeting at work, but that I should be able to smoke pot at work. <laughs> can do what they want, I agree. What the hell kind of a thing? I can't even believe you said that. <laughs> well, I mean it. But I know you don't mean it. I do mean it. I because you are pro- able to smoke pot at work as a comedian. No, I used to. Yeah, what are you talking about? Well, when I said me, I was, I was using me as a global me, you know. As somebody who works. Yeah, as somebody who works. works. As somebody okay, who works for a living. Hypothetically. <laughs> I don't understand that one, Greg. I think I can grasp that. I don't understand it. One iota. Now, listen. Urban Outfitters is under fire for carrying a new product called Jesus Dress Up, a magnetic crucifix that comes complete with Jesus Whoa. and a variety of clothes and accessories, including a devil outfit. <laughs> now, I know you guys all... But wait a minute. Before oh, all you guys... Are, I know all you guys are... Poo- yeah, oh, they must be stupid. They, they think that's in bad taste. if they're booing a oh. magnet! Oh, yeah. A magnet. No, but if, but if the magnet was our dress up, you'd be like, oh, that's a no, bad but that would be, you. Nobody would do that because you're not allowed to portray the the prophet in in any visual way. Why not? It's because against, that's not my it's, point! It's, my point is... I don't know why, but it's... You guys think this is cutting edge the and rebellious. It's not cutting edge. It's not rebellious. It's All not. it is is bugging a bunch of people that, want, that believe in Jesus Christ. 
It's all of marketing. Sudden, and, uh, it's it's the not way, marketing. It is. It's, it's the only way Urban Arthritis can get oh, talked about. Oh boy! It does seem like it's uh, it does seem like it's the last acceptable bias, though, if you think about it. Like the fact right. that you were really, really able to say that all Christians are stupid just for saying Jesus, or the fact that yeah. it is a little bit yes. it is a little bit strange. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't know, see then, Elijah Muhammad up there. You I have one of those on oh, my you do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, I take yeah. Yeah. I see. Absolutely. But what Greg is saying is just he true. Looks great the Christians are so dangerous in this country that people badmouth them all day on TV, off TV, make right. jokes, and nothing ever happens to them. But isn't so why them quit living a lie like it's 1950? Well, I think all religious extremism is dangerous. I don't care. I no, I'm it. saying it's not oh, dangerous. Man. Nobody. Yes, people, it is. But wait a minute. There's no Christian extremism. People badmouth Jesus day in and day out on TV, on every movie, you and they act like they're being rebellious. You are wrong. It's the it's other way. It's not like way. I'm the one who's not Christianity. Why, why are this. homosexuals not allowed to marry? Because of one reason, the Bible. No That's kidding. the only that true. reason. And all the Christians are all so hung there. up about so, it. Look, look like I said before, you got that one point that I... I it's a good point. What else? It's the only point. The rest of this is bullshit. And if so it's not worth it, I'm not worth it. Yeah, gay people aren't worth it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Gay people aren't worth it. Well, no. If it's like if gay people you have know, been held down by, cri- by religion of all kinds for I wasn't thousands saying, of years, I'm saying this. No. Nope. <laughs> First of all, all of them. Excuse all of them. me. Other religions cut your throat, namely Islam. Talk about that. And Christians used to cut our no, throat. No, used to 500 years ago. Now we're stuck if we're getting married. And you don't even want to get. You don't even want to get. Wait. You don't even want to get married. You just did it to bust balls. Now go ahead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I do you? Whatever. Whatever. Actually, the guy and the guy that produces this though, he said that he, it's not. Yeah. He's not doing it to be offensive. He's doing it to show the diversity of opinion of the of the of the Urban Outfitters customers. And I think that's true because there there are some customers what? who think Jesus is the Son of God and some that think he's a, a ballerina. <laughs> You know what? Actually, he can be both. He could be both. I think Jesus was both. He was a ballerina and the son of God. We'll be right back. After five months of downtime, the tough crowd message boards came back last month. And you bastards picked up right where you left off. You know, we don't let these cyber maulings continue sans rebuttal. Greg, the first one is yours. It says, I like Greg Giraldo, but he's a douche. <laughs> Twice now he's canceled his appearance at the punchline here in the ATL, which I guess means Atlanta. That means twice I've had to go out of my way to cancel my reservations. Well, uh, I guess I'm supposed to slam you, but I- I'm flattered that you're a fan, and I'm sorry I had to cancel gigs at the Atlanta Punchline, a club I actually really enjoy working. But you have to understand, in this business, sometimes big things come up. Like, I had to cancel my last trip there because I was offered a huge role in an HBO original movie. I played a genital wart in the Jim Norton story. <laughs> I was... I was in I was in almost every scene. Now, while I appreciate you are angry having to cancel your reservations, calling me a douche seems a little harsh and outdated. The correct term is freedom rinse. Um, on the uh, on the other hand, if uh, if by douche you mean something that's been inside your mother's smelly hole hundreds of times, then uh, I, I guess you described me perfectly. Okay. This next comment uh, is about a recent picture of me that appeared in Maxim magazine. Is it just me, or does Colin look way freaking short? Does anyone know how tall he is? There was an article with him in this month's Maxim, all dressed up in a leprechaun suit, and he looked like a friggin' midget. First of all, stupid, I'm 5'11". 5'10 and three quarters, but I'm 5'11". Second of all, you're the kind of guy, you look, you're looking for flaws in the total package because you can't find any. So you have to make up a fake thing about my height. Oh, one of Mos- Mona Lisa's eyes is crooked, you stupid idiot. When will I catch up with you? And I will. Jim, here's one from one of your smarter fans. This dude rocks. He might be a perv spelled Prev. But that's okay. We all are in our own special way. Next time Colin tells him to shut up, he should just jump up and knock him on his ass. Yeah! I, um, 
I wholeheartedly concur. Um, <laughs> not only that I rock, which of course I do, but that I should give Colin a good face smashing the next time he disrespects me on this show. Uh, I have been lenient with him due to his advanced age and spindly cancer patient legs, but uh, <laughs> thanks to your inspiration, the next time he gets mouthy, I'm going to belt him right in his thin reptilian lips. And uh, I have to say, Greg, uh, you are not nearly big enough to play one of my warts. <laughs> Someone had harsh words for my St. Patrick's Day outfit, by the way. Listen to this piece of... <laughs> Don't ever call yourself Irish. You're an embarrassment. <laughs> Did you ever look at a picture of a kilt? You wore yours backwards, you limp pretender. <laughs> Instructions come with rented Scottish kilts like yours. Listen, man. I'm going to tell you something. First of all, you don't critique me in the skirt. We all know about my legs. It's a big running joke around here, apparently. But I promise you, if you ever have the nuts to show up at this place, I'll put a mini skirt and go-go boots on, and I'll beat your ass like an ecstasy adult tranny. I'll be all over you. All right, you heartless SOBs. you got two minutes to post something nice before the Act 4 starts. We'll be right back. <laughs> Folks, thanks to the passion and such toys as Magnetic Jesus, that hip, our Lord and Savior has grossed more money in the past two weeks than Buddha and Allah combined. Tell us another way to make money from the death of Jesus, Greg. One word, Jesus size. <laughs> you got to admit, for a guy that lived on bread and wine, Jesus was ripped. Our Jesus size videos would give you the lean physique of the Savior. Uh, well, we could also charge a license fee to every Hispanic family that names their son Jesus. But the biggest score comes when we become TV preachers who solicit donations from old and vulnerable people. We tell them to call our 800 number and pledge all their money. And in return, we'll tell them we'll pray to Jesus to, to heal their illnesses or help their loved ones. I know this last one is too cruel and probably illegal, but I think we can get away with it. Uh, Kathy. That one was adorable. Kathy. Exposure and uh, raising awareness. I feel that Jesus should do a sex type tape like Paris Hilton. I think it should be that green, grainy color, and I think it's going to do nothing like Paris Hilton. It's going to do nothing but boost his career. It's probably going to lead to a guest spot for him on the OC or Las Vegas. Um, he could then do the talk show circuit, talk to Larry King, Diane Sawyer, Barbara Walters, get the tears going, be, be vulnerable. People love a survivor. <laughs> Wait. Well, Jesus Christ is not only the world's most recognizable religious icon and also the very Son of God, but he's also a popular phrase. So we need to do what Donald Trump did with your fired and trademark the expression Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> And then we donate that trademark to the federal school lunch program. That way, anytime some jerk uses the Lord's name in vain, a poor black child gets a free glass of milk. Scott! <clears throat> well, uh, I would market tools for the S&M community. Pontius Pilate paddles for those naughty Long Island Jewish boys. Barabbas ball weights, which make it very tough to escape your leather-clad Roman captor. Ow, ow! And Golgotha gags for when your slave just won't shut up. You've been forsaken, bitch. Daddy's not coming. Whoa. Wait, well, folks. Wait, what's that sound I hear? It's the sound of no repercussions from what just got said in this... Christian attacking nation I keep hearing about. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>